I'm trying to share my screen. Um, So good morning, everyone. Um, welcome to this session. Um, we're actually going to review the tax policy that has been drafted by Treasury. And so this is really a, an important discussion to have because it does affect all the work that we're doing within um, the startup and SME ecosystem. And so today we're also joined by one of our members who is a uh, VIFA consult led by Victor Otieno, who will now take us through the policy, the, actual, the, the drafted policy that is there uh, already, and then also present some case studies from India and other parts of the world that really have a really robust policy, policy structure. And then we can actually see how we can enhance the current policy that is being drafted by Treasury to ensure that also it captures the key needs on the ground. So allow me to give you a small introduction about ASEC and who we are and how we actually form this session. So ASEC is an association, a uh, membership-based association that's bringing together entrepreneur support organizations across the country that really are supporting key entrepreneurial services to entrepreneurs and also startups. And some of those services include training, coaching, mentorship, um, linking them to markets, linking them to um, different ecosystem players or even access to markets as well, just to help SMEs really grow and strengthen their businesses. Um, we're governed by five key pillars that govern our mandate as an association. So one of them is on policy. So we do drive the policy agenda with our, with our, with our members, as well as now collaborating more closely with government, development partners, also linking with investors, just to ensure that we develop our rigorous ecosystem standards and guidelines, at the same time influencing a more conducive um, environment for the um, for SMEs and startups to really thrive and grow. And the, part, the discussion that actually we're having today is really anchored under our policy pillar and that is why we felt that it was very important to have this national discussion and really dive deep into actually what um, the policy we are actually proposing to to pass uh, within government so the second one that we do have is collaboration so under collaboration it is actually linking different um, ecosystem players so ASEC actually has uh, has partnership agreements with different ecosystem actors, and that's across the different um, players. And then from then, we actually have an opportunity to devolve some of these partnerships down to our members so that they can actually enjoy those benefits. So for example, like now linking with the Kenya National Innovation Agency that actually has um, some sort of funding for entrepreneurs and SMEs. So we actually find a way of spotlighting or even shortlisting some of the startups that actually can go and pitch under the Kenya Innovation Week, which is happening in December, and they actually get access to those opportunities through the collaboration of ASEC. The third one is on internationalization. So looking at um, how do we promote and position the Kenyan entrepreneurial ecosystem at a pan-African and also international level. And, I, and the idea for this actually is to just increase our discoverability across the ecosystem globally to access financing, to access markets, at the same time also looking at technology and knowledge transfer. We also understand and appreciate that other economies are well developed and they also wow. have the vast uh -huh. structures. Wow. So under the internationalization pillar, we find a way Way of having a fusion between the Kenyan ecosystem linking with international partners as well. And their fourth one is looking at capacity building. So we do facilitate uh, trainings and access to mentorship um, and also like different uh, partners that are knowledge um, partners as well to actually be able to support our members who are now the incubators, accelerators to ensure that they keep evolving and also keep adapting to the you know, because you know, if you look at innovation, it's very fluid. So we find a way of always capacity building our members to ensure they're staying up to date with the current trends and even looking at how they can strengthen their systems and processes so that they can also support a, a larger number of entrepreneurs and thereby increasing the impact of their work to the different um, SMEs and startups across. The fifth one is looking at empowerment. So we actively scout for opportunities through collaboration and 
partnerships, and then I would deliver these opportunities to our members to actually implement on the ground. So the unique thing about ASEC is that we do not work directly with SMEs, but we do find this, in, in, we call them innovation projects, whether it's around agriculture, around circular economy, around manufacturing sector, and then now it's actually our members who implement those projects on the ground, because in a way of enhancing their skill set, at the same time also ensuring that they, they, they also get value added. Um, in terms of revenue, they're actually able to earn revenue through these diverse projects that we run. So looking at our different footprints um, across Kenya, so we do have more than 55 innovation hubs scattered across the country of Kenya. And the reason why we advocate for nationwide representation is because we understand that there are a lot of grassroots innovations that are coming up and want to ensure that each of our members have a hub that is based in the strategic location where entrepreneurs are. So for example, looking at Western Kenya, they focus more on agriculture and the blue economy. We also have you know, the central part of Kenya, we have the Northern part, we have the Southern part, and any other part as well. So our members come from those diverse areas and they also serve entrepreneurs across diverse sectors. So looking at partnership, because we are very keen on uh, collaborating with many different actors. So we have different partnerships ranging from government, um, to international partners who are organizing global events like JITEX, Zaid, Agorize, ETC. And then also we have also media. And also, of course, we partner with research organizations just to support that. And then also we link up with other associations as well. Um, looking at our impact, so far we've been able to reach one, more than 1,000 participants through our diverse engagement initiatives. And also, you are also partaking this different uh, engagement initiative that we have initiated. And then looking also at working with the number of entrepreneur, entrepreneur support organizations, there are more than 55. We have implemented nine innovation projects that are touching with micro, small, medium, and also large um, entrepreneurs, and they've actually been able to benefit from that. We've been able to facilitate five ecosystem dialogue initiatives, and that's linking also with Pan-African partners, just to ensure that also we are having a, a wholesome discussion that really is uh, about benchmarking and then also learning from different ecosystems about what is actually working in their country and how we can either adapt it in Kenya or find a way of collaborating with that partner. The other thing also we've been able to do is uh, work on two policy initiatives. So I don't know if you've heard about the starter bill. Um, the startup bill also was uh, drafted by ASEC in collaboration with many other partners. And the idea for that was really about creating a conducive environment for the startup to thrive. So if you look at a startup, it's not the same as an SME. And really, they are the kind of the forgotten segment that really needs a lot of funding and a lot of support and even a, a structured framework in how we can actually support startups to really thrive. Because if you look at their impact, it actually is a much higher impact than a typical traditional SME. And so how then do we accelerate that? And that is by looking at the policy and regulation framework that's under the startup bill. The second one also we've been able to do is uh, the, co the code of conduct, which is uh, looking at how do we ensure fair engagements and interactions across different actors who are working with entrepreneurs in the, in the space and ensure that also they are well taken care of. Um, in terms of um, the number of entrepreneurs who have directly benefited from these projects, we're looking at over 600 entrepreneurs who have enrolled for the different programs, and then we've had over 200 entrepreneurs who have been funded. Um, financially just to help them scale up their business and then also been able to profile over 15 members across different platforms not, not, not just only national level but also pan-african and also international um, if you're looking at the finances so through the different initiatives we've been able to support the 200 entrepreneurs who have been funded they've received a funding of 418,000 euros that's roughly 51 million Kenyan shillings and that really is an attribute of why we need to create a conducive environment for the entrepreneurs that way we can actually channel more funding and then they can be able to scale their business and grow so looking at also our members because also we want to ensure that we are having sustainable entrepreneur support organizations we also been able to generate for them revenue over seven seventy eight thousand euros that really has helped them um you know scale their business to other counties and also ge other geographies and then also looking at how they've been able to scale their team to also provide more support uh to entrepreneurs today. So I just wanted to uh, just to give a high level overview about who ASTEC is and what we do. And really one of the things that also we value working 
within ASEC is partnering also with our members because we believe our members do have a lot of knowledge and research. And that is one thing that we are able to provide as an ASEC, as a, we, we provide for them a platform where they can actually come and speak about these pertinent issues and actually find a way to pull in other different partners that can actually contribute to this national agenda. And so I'd like to hand it over to, I think I saw Anne, Anne Lamy, are you still here? Okay, so I'd like to hand it over to Victor. Victor Otieno is a longtime friend, but also a very uh, good um, member of ASEC. He's also been part of the founding team of ASEC, which started in 2018. And so he's really an expert when it comes to taxes, when it comes to anything policy related, and he has a real passion for the SME and startup ecosystem. And so I think that's why it is that it's, it's very befitting to have you as a facilitator for this session today, and uh, really happy to have you. My name is Masiki Malat. I'm the CEO for ASEC, and really I'm very honored to also have all of you take time today and just discuss about this session. So Victor, over to you. Um, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Marcy. And uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Victor Otieno. I'm the Managing Director of VIFA Consult, uh, an SME and Startup uh, Research and Policy, uh, Research and Consultancy, sorry. Um, so I think as Marcy has alluded, the basis for our conversation Yeah, I think Marcy muted me. Anyway. So the basis of our conversation, of course, uh, as Marcy has indicated, is uh, the call for comments by the national, uh, national uh, the national treasury and planning um, uh, for different stakeholders to be able to give their comments on the on the draft, um, you know, tax policy that uh, that they are working on. And of course, this comes on the back of you know uh, uh, the you know governments. Um, aim or desire to be able to streamline and align and, and ensure that taxation works uh, uh, both for government in terms of uh, revenue collection, but also it is able to work for the entrepreneurs in terms of having a, a conducive environment uh, for, for business. And I think if you look at it from, from, from the bigger perspective, we are looking at, you know, the, the whole idea, the whole agenda around uh, ease of doing business, which I think, um, you know, of course, government has been able to uh, do quite a bit uh, around the same general in terms of, um, you know, the business climate, uh, looking at, you know, I think the last uh, milestone report was last year. Uh, probably you can be able to have a look and probably you can be able to see uh, the various stri uh, uh, strikes government has been able to, uh, to put in place to ensure that, um, you know, uh, the business environment uh, works well. So I think uh, this falls in line with that. And uh, we thought it would be befitting for, um, players or stakeholders within the, M the MSME as well as startup community to be able to voice their uh, their opinion or give their their comments uh, uh, to this particular uh, policy because at the end of the day it uh, it would affect us. So I think uh, for 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 those of us who know how government works is uh, of course you have you have a guiding policy that uh, that would uh, trickle down to actual legislation. So the legislation, of course feeds from the tax policy. So uh, we thought that it would only make sense if we were able to help uh, in developing the story. So that by the time we get legis legislation, it, it is legislation that is anchored on, on, on or resonates with the values or the aspirations that we have um, as a community. So uh, the, 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 the flip side for, I think most of us is to be very reactive in terms of government policy. So whether we are in startup community, whether we are in uh, the MSME, MSME space, is to be reactive, uh, maybe at a bill level or uh, legislation being put uh, put out. Uh, then it becomes very difficult. Like, like for example, uh, currently maybe we have the finance, uh, the 2022 finance bill, which uh, you know uh, puts out uh, various tax measures to be able to for government um, to collect revenue. So it's very difficult for you to be able to um, you know advocate at that level because uh, it's almost going towards the tail end of that process. So um, uh, having your voice heard or push, pushing your opinion or your comments at policy at, at, at a policy level um, um, is, much, uh, is much easier. And probably you can be able to look at it from, uh, from, from the long-term point of view. So this is the basis upon which we, we, we uh, started off this conversation. And uh, the approach that we took, uh, or we, we currently uh, are taking is uh, uh, three. Number one is we are publishing uh, uh, a peer-reviewed paper around 
um, the effect of taxation uh, on MSMEs. Um, you know, just looking at uh, different jurisdictions, looking at maybe at Nigeria, Brazil, um, you know, and India uh, as a comparison to see how well uh, a tax policy is able to support uh, uh, the growth of businesses uh, uh, across across board. So uh, that process is underway. We've, uh, we are, the paper is currently under review. We hope that that can be published either you know this week or uh, or the coming uh, the coming week. Uh, the second, of course, was to based off that literature review, based off that study, is to be able to craft a, to draft a, a position for. Um, um, MSMEs as well as startups, uh, uh, given that, of course, startups are currently not recognized in law, uh, at least in their, in their, in their technical naming, um, just to be able to, um, uh, you know, give a position that would allow, uh, would, or that will encourage uh, startups and MS, MSMEs to thrive. Um, and of course, as we do that, it, uh, do a validation of sorts, uh, put out whatever thinking that we have, or whatever hypothesis that we think uh, would work for, for, for the community. And, and of course, if once we put that out there, then probably you can be able to give feedback and uh, we can be able to um, you know, move together forward. Uh, let me just uh, share my, my screen, sorry. So, um, so of course, uh, the focus of of of, uh, of our of our submission would uh, primarily be uh, founded on SMEs, uh, with startups also featuring uh, towards the tail end. Um, so, of course, I've been able to introduce uh, who Vifa Vifa is. Uh, as I said, is uh, we, we our focus is research and consultancy. We work uh, both with ESOs as well as uh, as entrepreneurs directly. Uh, our work primarily is to be able to use this research and data to inform how ESOs engage uh, with SMEs. Uh, of course, uh, as a foundation to that, we also do quite a bit of uh, research uh, uh, around policy uh, and giving uh, alternative policy position uh, to what uh, government currently uh, or has or, um, or, or they, whatever they have. So, in terms of background, um, uh, background generally, and as well as background um, on the on the tax policy, uh, the the aim of government is to be able to increase uh, tax yield, um, and by tax yield, basically what that means is government needs to be able to uh, expand its revenue base, uh, based on uh, on the activities that they is, they are seeing uh, in the economy. So there is a, a specific focus uh, towards uh, getting revenue from agriculture, uh, which of course, as you know, it contributes around 24% uh, to GDP directly and another 20 plus something uh, to, uh, indirectly. So agriculture uh, in its entire, if you look at the entire value chain, uh, contributes me, uh, close to, or even more than 40% to GDP. So it's a sector that um, um, uh, contributes highly to the economy, but uh, uh, in terms of uh, revenue, it's, um, uh, its contribution towards revenue is not is not in tandem, so the government is looking towards that. Uh, government also is looking towards the informal sector, or popularly known as as Jokali, which has been uh, has been uh, historically very difficult to tax. Uh, of course, if you look at uh, the nature of an informal business, um, you know um, it's outside the formal economy. And if you look at taxation, the way it's structured, it is based on a formal uh, a formal business. So that's that's uh, the 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 school of thought. That's the direction that. We are seeing the tax, uh, the tax policy uh, going towards, and I, 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 and and I think as a foundation to that, there is a, a subtle push towards uh, form, uh, formal operations. So trying to convert the over seventy nine percent of SMEs who are informal towards uh, uh, towards formalization, and if they're able to formalize, then probably then uh, the uh, government through national treasury can be able to collect more taxes. And of course, if you look at uh, uh, KRA records, we have around 6.1 million taxpayers uh, against a uh, uh, working population of around 17 million, if you have to look uh, at uh, the MSME space. So there is, a, there is a big gap. And I think the question is, how can we be able to sustainably, sustainably address this by ensuring that uh, you know, we bring uh, the informal sector uh, towards the tax fold 
Uh, but even as we do that, it can't be, uh, you know, we have to formalize you and tax you. So I think that language maybe probably uh, needs to be looked at, uh, because if you look at uh, best practice or different case studies across uh, the three jurisdictions I have, in, I have indicated is, it's a, it's a balance between support and, uh, and uh, support, uh, which of course formalization becomes a, a byproduct of support. Then of course the second, uh, at a second level or the ripple effect of that is, uh, is that uh, um, compliance also, also goes up. So, uh, so that probably we are also uh, in the same, on the same page in terms of what we mean by um, MSMEs. The word is used interchangeably, SMEs, MSMEs uh, uh, combined. Uh, but if you are to strictly go with the MSME Act 2012 um, and focusing on micro and small, um, that the definition is based on attributes or characteristics. So a micro business is a business that uh, you know, has a turnover of less than a million less uh, less than 10 employees and specifically for manufacturing sector has investments of less than 10 million and looking at service and agriculture sector uh, investments of, uh, of less than 5 million so technically this is what we call a micro a micro enterprise and of course a majority of uh, of businesses in Kenya are, fall within that space and of course are, are in the mode. if you look at a, and a small enterprise we're looking at a turnover of between 1 to 5 million uh, 10 to 50 employees and uh, uh, we have threshold uh, uh, threshold around around manufacturing as well as uh, agriculture um so of course i think uh, the uh, the support towards msme uh, has not started today so this is a journey that i think uh, started as 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 late or as early as as 1963 so of course, uh, uh, pegged on the ILO report around um, back then, in terms of just being able to define who SMEs are, uh, which sectors do they fall in, and how the economy is really structured, and how uh, best uh, government can be able to support this sector. So we've had a raft of uh, policy as well as legislative interventions over the years uh, that have tried to be able to support um, SMEs. And we feel that the national tax policy must be able to must speak to that. Uh, yes, we are looking at, at revenue collection, but uh, 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 tax policy or, uh, or the taxation in general should be a tool that uh, incentivizes uh, growth of, of, uh, of any sector, and specifically for this instant, um, both SMEs as well as startups. So as much as, as uh, the policy looks at means and ways of formalizing businesses and taxing, taxing them, I think, uh, the, over, the, the overarching school of thought or philosophy or theory of change would be to be able to support sufficiently for them to grow and uh, then probably you can be able to tax. Otherwise, if the language uh, becomes uh, a question of let's formalize and tax, then we might not be able to achieve, uh, uh, achieve much. So we feel that the, the tax policy should be able to speak to that uh, towards uh, supporting uh, uh, um, SMEs, uh, then as we talk about support, maybe as we go towards legislation, then we can see uh, uh, that uh, uh, coming uh, uh, into four. So as one of the, uh, in terms of the five areas or five objectives around the tax policy that we feel should, uh, should, uh, should come out is, uh, as I've highlighted uh, on point number four, is ensuring a clear link between, uh, uh, you, know, um, you know, it's almost like a carrot, uh, a, a carrot and a stick. Uh, uh, ensuring that at the front we see support, we see incentives, and at the back uh, we see taxation. So there has to be an incentive of a positive reinforcement uh, kind of approach in terms of approaching SME taxation and formalization. Um, so of course we have issues around technology which must be encouraged. Um, I, of course, um, also being very clear to uh, indicate the importance of uh, you know, formalization um, and uh, uh, in terms of, you know, contributing towards uh, the economy. And that has to be given credence uh, that people have to be, we have to find a way of celebrating um, SMEs who are able to, uh, you know, contribute towards the economy. We always see annually, maybe, you know, the president uh, giving awards to Safaricom EAPL for being good taxpayers. Uh, and something very similar for, for small businesses. Uh, who are creating jobs, who are contributing towards the economy. So there has to be a way we are able to recognize as a country uh, the role that SMEs play. Uh, then probably as we see it, then it encourages uh, you know businesses to be able to formalize and play a greater role 
in terms of uh, in terms of compliance. So uh, based on literature review, of course, we uh, um, the major one being the uh, Kenya National Bureau of Statistics MSME report 2016. Uh, it has identified um, a couple of challenges that SMEs face, and of course, compliance and government regulation is a major. Uh, sticking point uh, for um, a, a lot of SMEs, which has a, cor a direct correlation uh, with compliance. So, for instance, if uh, you know uh, getting uh, the taxes are, are high, uh, business licenses are high, uh, complying with them is complicated. Uh, then it, it has a repercussion uh, in terms of uh, formalization. So, given we, uh, we know and we've seen, um, you know, uh, evidence of government. Uh, Making significant efforts towards compliance and you know regulation, uh, I think if you were to review the for the last ten years the business amendment laws, uh, government has been able to try to streamline, uh, you know, general uh, regulatory uh, environment across board, uh, and there is evidence uh, towards that. But still, uh, we still have a challenge in terms of uh, of small businesses. Uh, uh, businesses, uh, small businesses still have challenges. Around access to finance, uh, you know, adaptation to to uh, to the environment, etc. So, can can this policy, uh, to some degree, try to address some of these challenges? That, or can we use this policy as a tool to be able to not only tax, formalize, and you know, etc. But can it can it also be used as a way of ensuring that uh, you know some of the challenges that SMEs face um, are addressed? So uh, in terms of uh, just a brief background in terms of government support that we've seen uh, across the years, and this is a, just an example of how policy would work. Uh, for example, we have the National Industrial Policy 2012, uh, as well as uh, there's another one, I think, uh, that came in 2016. And the idea, was, again, I think at, at, at the Industrial Policy 2012 was looking at uh, the general philosophy was around uh, uh, supporting local industry through uh, import substitution. So what that means is uh, looking at uh, you know what Kenya imports in terms of its its, uh, its import bill and looking at products that can be produced locally. So for instance, uh, currently maybe for example we we import wheat. Um, you know wheat is among the products uh, the top products that we import. Uh, uh, just as an example is how can we be able to support uh, the local industries to be able to uh, you know. Uh, produce wheat so that uh, because uh, by importing it means that basically we have a demand around the same so uh, legislations that came out of the national industrial policy 2012 uh, of course is the small uh, micro small enterprise bill which which uh, which is the msme act 2012 um, again just to be able to recognize smes and provide a framework for supporting uh, through uh, micro small enterprise authority we have the public procurement asset disposal act of 2012 which of course Aim to open business opportunities small to small businesses. The National Construction Authority Act 2012, 2011, which um, limited uh, uh, activities of foreign entities that would allow uh, smaller businesses to be able to thrive. Uh, we have the Kenya National Trade Policy 2016. Again, uh, there are different legislations uh, that uh, came out of that. I think uh, at the uh, top of mind, we can see the credit guarantee scheme conversation started uh, from that policy document. So we can see a direct link between uh, uh, policy and uh, legislation. So I think that's uh, this was just to give us uh, pointers uh, towards the importance of uh, you know being able to contribute towards a, a, a policy paper. Of course, uh, I think the most recent one we have the micro small uh, enterprise policy 2012, which for, for for which was interesting as as we were reviewing it, we found that part of the objectives of the micro small enterprise policy were talked about startups. So if you look at, if you are to uh, go to, uh, to that policy document, you would see that it's speaking towards startups, uh, which is very interesting in the sense that if you look, at, if you looked at technically who startups are and how, who SMEs are, uh, them featuring in, in one document um, is, um, I'm not sure if, that, if that's the most optimal way of of supporting startups. Again, uh, the more we're able to review uh, this kind of policy documents, the more we're able to uh, give uh, alternative positions. Uh, we've seen uh, under the same policy, uh, government through Ministry of Industry uh, set up BHR centers across across the counties. Um, again, it's just to bring government services or government support um, at a local level. Um, so for us, um, as for us, as we go towards, uh, of course, understand, uh, uh, giving our commentary around um, uh, the tax policy, we probably also have to be able to understand 
uh, how taxation works in Kenya uh, in terms of just uh, the general flow, um, especially uh, after the enactment of the, uh, the constitution in 2010. So it goes through uh, three, uh, uh, five stages, uh, formulation, approval, implementation, and um, audit and evaluation. So in terms of formulation uh, of, of a budget, because when we talk about taxation, taxation feeds towards uh, you know, government spending. Uh, so for, for government to spend, then probably they have to be able to raise revenue, um, uh, both locally, uh, which, which is, they can do through, either through taxation or local borrowing, as well as uh, external borrowing. So formulation, that this is done um, at, uh, you know, by the executive at both the national and county governments. And the output of that is a, a budget policy statement. So prior to, uh, before the reading of the budget in June, I think for, with the exception of this year, um, um, usually uh, uh, the national treasury would come up with a document called a, a budget policy statement, which gives guidance in terms of gives uh, the foundation or basis upon which uh, uh, the, the national budget uh, um, is done. So of course, once the budget policy statement uh, goes through public participation, it goes through uh, uh, parliament, which uh, you know, uh, is able to uh, look at it and uh, critique, give feedback, um, which then would uh, lead to uh, the, the, the national budget being read. Uh, after being read, of course, uh, it will be implemented or executed. And of course, we have um, output of that through the control of budgets, uh, quarterly budget reports. So for you can be able to see how how money how money is being spent. Um, then, of course, the, lastly, we have audit and evaluation. Of course, we have systemic challenges around this. Um, you know, in terms of implementation, uh, you know, we see, budget, for instance, a budget being read within a month. A supplementary budget has been passed, which uh, bypasses the whole idea essence of going through. Uh, uh, entire, an entire process, an entire process of, of, of budgeting. So, um, of course, uh, if you look at taxation uh, um, and based on literature review, we know that ta the uh, taxation has a direct bearing on the performance of SMEs, performance in terms of growth, but also performance in terms of uh, formalization. So uh, it's a very uh, delicate balance that uh, government has in terms of uh, being able to tax appropriately, ensuring that it's able to generate revenue, but as well as uh, not being punitive to, to, to kill off or stagnate the, uh, the, the, the growth of businesses. So uh, based again on both our own studies, government studies and other actors, we know that regulation and uh, compliance uh, in Kenya is not, is not, is not too high. Uh, of course, the numbers is that we have 6.1 million registered taxpayers against a, 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 a working population of uh, around 17 million, 17.4 uh, million people. So it means that for us to be able to bridge the gap and move from 6.1 to close to 17, it means that we probably need, need to be able to uh, find mechanisms of ensuring that we support as well as, uh, as, we, as we tax. So if you, if you have conversations with a lot of businesses, a lot of SMEs, we see that um, you know the taxation environment uh, is not as conducive. Uh, you know, you know, we have your VAT, you have your corporate tax. Um, Living them, of course, uh, is uh, has you know the jury is still out there uh, in terms of um, how conducive that is. So that's that's the that's the the challenge that we have. We know that there is a correlation between uh, level of taxation, uh, how taxes are. In, uh, are levied and the performance of, um, of, of SMEs. So in terms of direction of the specific ta draft tax, tax policy that, uh, that National Treasury has put out, again, is the, the, the idea is fantastic. Uh, the idea is to, can we be able to bring predictability to taxation in Kenya? So for instance, um, currently we have the budgeting process that happens every year. Um, and every year we see taxation changing. So by the time you're, you're getting your, uh, you know, your tax, uh, uh, your, you know, finance bill coming 2022, it's significantly different from the finance bill of the previous year. Uh, maybe for example, VAT for for, for a part of certain product features this year, next year it doesn't, it's not there. Uh, you know, so that level of unpredictability is not um, is not good for business. So the general um, philosophy of having a tax policy that is reviewed. Every five years, um, I think is a is a is a is a is a big plus, uh, is a big plus for Kenya. So I think uh, that can be able to allow both local as well as foreign investors be able to 
um, predict. Uh, just like, uh, you know, when you go to, uh, you know, you, you rent or lease up an office space, uh, at contracting level, you already know what your rent is and at what rate that rent is going to increase. So you can align your business strategies around the same. So with, an, with, a, with a situation where taxation, which is a major expense for a lot of businesses, uh, keeps on changing annually, then it means it makes it very difficult for you to be able to uh, um, for you to be able to comply. Uh, so for micro business or entrepreneurs within the lower end of the spectrum, then the idea is to just avoid avoid that situation uh, 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 once and for all. So in terms of our, our of our proposal or approach, again, of course, this is based on um, you know uh, literature that we've been able to generate over over the last couple of years, as well as uh, looking at different case studies. There are three themes that we that we thought that uh, this policy should look at. Uh, like I mentioned, as I started, is there has to be a link between uh, taxation and ease of doing business. So you can be able to tax, but can you be able to streamline that process? Uh, so that um, and we've seen, I think, uh, through KRA currently, we we've, we see uh, through uh, you know you can be able to do your tax your registration uh, online, which is a good thing. But can we be able to further um, improve that? So uh, these are the three themes. Number one is is of doing business. Uh, number two is attractiveness uh, to, uh, of public procurement opportunities. We've seen Agpo launched, but uh, for some reason, from so for some technical reasons or whatever, uh, young people SMEs are not able to uh, access uh, these government opportunities. And lastly, can we be able to link uh, the policy uh, to towards access to access to market and business support? Uh, like I said, uh, taxation or is is a tool. Uh, just like the way you can have interest rates that uh, the central bank uh, uh, levies and uses as a way to be able to control inflation and maybe be able to just ensure that uh, the you know flow of cash is is optimal. So I, we believe that taxation can also be used as a tool uh, to be able to support uh, 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 the economy, support uh, formalization and incentivization of of small businesses. So if you look at our proposal, is based on um, on uh, these three themes. And just as an example, um, if you are to look at uh, ease of doing business, so um, our proposal is uh, for because small businesses are, are small, uh, they don't want uh, to uh, complication and you don't want multiple taxes. Uh, our proposal is to have a single replacement tax, uh, which uh, we will incorporate, which uh, is almost like uh, the, the, the turnover tax that we currently have, which is uh, uh, taxed uh, at, the, at the sales that you have. The challenge again with the turnover tax, as I think we've seen, is it assumes that you are profitable, because so uh, you know you are taxed at 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 gross at gross level uh, at gross level. So um, ideally, is to be able to have a, a single tax that acts that is able to incorporate uh, you know your turnover tax or your annual tax or whatever. It can be able to include uh, uh, you know your NSSF, NHIF under one roof, so that when I pay as a small business, maybe for example, is a butchery. The moment I pay uh, this particular this single tax, and we've seen that with rental income. So rental income, if you look at care currently, is charged at ten percent. So they're not asking you for you know where is your property, how many uh, units, give us a lease agreement. Uh, if you go to ITAX currently for 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 rental, you just indicate uh, the number of properties and the gross amount that you charge for tax. Uh, you charge uh, as rental, then uh, automatically they charge 10% and that's it. So that has really simplified, uh, you know, taxation for that, uh, for that matter. For, sm for smaller businesses, I think combining all that into one, um, into one license um, would be, I think would be a huge plus. Uh, if we're able to, uh, for instance, combine, uh, you know, your national tax uh, business license at the county, as well as NSF, NHIF as a single tax, then of course that brings simplicity so that at the back end the various departments or ministries can be able to uh, uh, recoup the amount uh, so we feel that that might will be able to bring simplicity out of the complexity of um, of taxation and immediately i'm able to comply i'm able to get my uh, tax, uh, tax compliance so that immediately releases me to be able to engage uh, whether i'm trading with corporates or whether i'm trading with government I'm able to say clearly that I, I am compliant. I think this can be a good starting point. Then as uh, businesses grow out of being small, then probably they can be uh, seamlessly be introduced to the, to the, to the, to the, to corporate tax VAT ETC. But at least uh, if you are able to, if you were to achieve the, uh, the objective of 
uh, formalization, then we can't we cannot be able to uh, complicate uh, taxation for for smaller businesses. So if someone is uh, you know in an open air market, let them be able to um, you know uh, apply and uh, apply for taxation using um, you know your mobile ETC, uh, get one tax that cuts across board. Um, of course, it's easier said than done. Uh, <laughs> combining NSF, NHF, uh, uh, TOT, as well as a county business license uh, can be a, a huge task. But if we're able to crack it, then probably then uh, that would really ease doing business for small businesses. Again, they don't have time, they don't have the cost, they don't have the information to be able to, you know, go to KRA and you know go online and try to uh, do all these kind of compliances. So simply put, just uh, looking at the proposal and um, um, our hypothesis in terms of, of benefits. Um, again, uh, linking taxation um, and compliance to uh, public uh, procurement opportunities, and uh, specifically AGPO. Again, can we be able to link, um, you know, uh, based on ease of doing business, me being able to comply, and can I can this be linked to public uh, 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 public procurement opportunities for small businesses? So once I'm able to uh, get my TCC, uh, it means that and I'm I'm able to comply. There is a direct link. Uh, of of you getting uh, uh, public uh, uh, procurement opportunities, um, so that would really um, you know make it easier for them to be able to access again um, you know opportunities within both national as well as as county government. So if this uh, can of course they are interlinked. If this can be addressed, then probably then we we should be able to see um, uh, some level of compliance uh, going up. Yeah, and it will give opportunities for smaller people to be able to participate in. Um, in, in public procurement. And again, if there is any taxation that uh, happens in terms of withholding tax or whatever taxes that uh, needs to be paid, then probably the, the, the customer or the government agency or uh, county government withholds that uh, at, at, at source. Again, uh, it makes it easier for, for, for the SME to comply. Once you, uh, I give my quote, I'm already compliant, uh, tax is, uh, is deducted at source. Um, that of course automatically from the back end is is received by carry again that uh, that is uh, that is compliance and if we can be able to uh, have preferential uh, uh, tax for locally produced goods that of course can be a huge plus or an added advantage so not only are you uh, accessing government procurement but if you are producing uh, the whatever product locally then probably you have some level of of, of preference um, and and the last thing of course is uh, linking um, uh, compliance uh, to to accessing markets. So uh, as I said in my opening statement, there has to be an incentivization or support of SMEs, then formalization becomes a byproduct of, of support. So we can see, of course, a shift uh, towards uh, looking at digital businesses and uh, generally innovation and startups. So of course, uh, I think currently we have the digital uh, digital tax. Uh, so again, can we be able to unpack that and see how can we be able to allow this sector to grow, then have a way of tax of taxing them as they grow based on support. Um, so I think that uh, is a conversation that a conversation that needs to happen in terms of can we be able to as part of this policy, can we be able to really look at at the startup uh, um, ecosystem, or can we be able to look at the innovation ecosystem in general? Look at uh, basically look at their needs um, and uh, see how we can be able to use tax and uh, you know uh, the regime around um, you know um, tax breaks to allow to be enable these uh, uh, organizations to grow. And I think if you look at Brazil, Brazil has something they are calling the simple simple national national nationalization something. It's a bit Spanish. So it's a tax regime that covers 65% of Brazil and accounts for uh, a quarter of uh, federal tax exemptions. So uh, exemptions can work if they are targeted, just like the way we have special economic zones, we have you know, uh, special economic zones, et cetera, where you, know, you get some, um, a zone that is classified as special uh, with very clear, uh, 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 clear output in terms of what is expected of them, whether it's job creation, whether it's tax ETC, um, you know, with clear timelines around the same. So if pro possibly we can be able to have a classification around the broader innovation as well as uh, startups, I think that can be able to cover the entire spectrum rather than just, you know, looking at uh, innovation in terms of digital businesses or online online businesses only. So I think that 
um, is a bit narrow. And if there is a, if they can be a link of of linking the different stakeholders within the startup ecosystem uh, to be able to um, 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 you know support as well as uh, ensure that startups are able to comply uh, if they are classified within a, a specific economic zone. So I think there has to there there is a link between of course startups as well as incubation of course um, in Kenya and in Africa that role of, of the incubator is not as pronounced um, but I think uh, again taxation can be used as a way of uh, ensuring that um, that uh, that happens. So I think in conclusion we agree uh, like I said that national tax policy brings predictability but there has to be a, 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 a deep a deep thinking or a thinking through in terms of how can we be able to use taxation as a tool to ensure that uh, and as, an, as an incentive for, for growth. Um, and then probably we can be able to have uh, a gradual um, you know, uh, taxation of, of small businesses. Uh, so that probably we can be able to plug in the gap of uh, the close to 10 million uh, businesses that are, are currently outside the fold of, 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 of the revenue authority. I think also the, the philosophy around the revenue authority still has to change. I think uh, just renaming the uh, the 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 KRA from you know authority to uh, whatever has to go skin deep. It, we can't just do PR and say now we are we are revenue something. But uh, the culture that uh, around uh, around uh, taxation is still punitive, and we currently see that play out um, uh, you know at the national stage. Um, you know with Keroche and all these uh, other different players who are there who where you know uh, it, it looks like it's uh, it's antagonistic i don't think um, revenue collection should be antagonistic it should be uh, uh, more of collaboration more of understanding each other and you know looking at a win win situation so that uh, some that's something that maybe uh, KRA must consider even the national treasury must consider that uh, you know beyond mere renaming uh, the culture around that has to has to change. Uh, the culture of, uh, of being sub of offering support and willing to listen to uh, to small businesses in terms of what their real needs are uh, would probably uh, be able to uh, to assist. And we've seen uh, similar engagements between government and private sector, of course, uh, at at a much much higher level in terms of CAPSA. We see them having roundtables with the president, with the national speaker, with the speaker of senate. We see them. Um, having roundtables with different actors, judiciary, ETC. Why can't we have a similar um, you know, engagement where we see um, SMEs uh, you know, through their different associations directly engage uh, KRA on a periodic basis? So at, yes, we have a policy, uh, at, 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 an working policy. Yes, we have legislations, but even with all this, sometimes things happen. So things might not uh, you know, work well. And we've seen this, uh, for instance, with the with the scrap metal dealers where you know uh, there was um, an entanglement of sorts and uh, they've been able to have continuous dialogue between the, of course the president the ministry of trade uh, etc and they've been able to look for solutions so despite having legislation despite having policy it's always be good to have an, a, a, an, an engagement framework that is either anchored in law or, or something that will allow uh, continuous feedback uh, for SMEs to be able to engage to ensure that uh, the legislation uh, uh, or the laws that are put in place uh, actually work uh, for, for, for small businesses. So I, uh, that's uh, basically that in terms of our presentation. But uh, as I said, it's uh, the presentation was based on uh, the paper that we uh, uh, currently uh, are in the process of publishing, as well as the submission of that paper. So we'll share that uh, the deadline for submission is the fifth, which is, which is this Friday. Um, we hope that we can be able to uh, do a submission, of course, on behalf of the different players within uh, across board between SMEs as well as startups. So we'll put in a joint submission of of of, of uh, uh, this. So yeah, so thank you very much, and uh, of course, I'm open or we are open to to feedback. Um, at least we have today and tomorrow. Uh, before we make, um, you know, our final submission to, uh, to the National Treasury. Thank you very much. I hand it over to uh, Marcy. I don't know, Marcy, probably can just moderate uh, in case there are any questions or comments. Yeah, no, thank you so much, Vita. I think that, that was a, those are very good um, inputs that you've actually just shared. 
And I think it was just more on having a discussion session, really. Um, and Victor, you've, laid, you've laid out the groundwork very well. Um, so I think just wanted to invite like any reactions, comments, uh, things that you wanted to be added onto the document that actually we're preparing to share with uh, Treasury. So I can just open the floor. I can see Morris. Morris, uh, I'm sure you, you have something to say. <laughs> and I know one thing when, when people hear on policy, they always think it's something very sticky and hard to really understand, but it's definitely something that you know we, we all need to participate and actually find a way of understanding. And I think Victor's found a way of explaining it to quote unquote the common one. So it's just now more on gathering feedback um on the on this one and then sharing. I think you said Morris had something to, to share. I was listening. No, 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 no. I, I have nothing to share. I was just interested to listen to the process and understand how it affects the, the community I represent. Um, yeah, so for today, fortunately, I have nothing to say. <laughs> so, Morris. <laughs> Okay, yeah, so I maybe think. I could make a comment. Yeah, kind of uh, I hope no, I don't have too much background noise. I'll try to be audible. Okay. I can hear you. Oh, we can hear you. Okay, good. Okay. Okay, first of all, I'd just like to thank you for, for hosting this session. When I saw it coming up, I purpose to attend um, because for me, I think these are the conversations we need to have as private sector. Uh, to be able to forward clear proposals to government as and when we want policy review. So um, um, just to say that this is something that we highly appreciate. Um, on different engagements, and from now I'm speaking um, from the government side, when we make proposals to different agencies in government, we are asked for backup from you know, uh, the views of the private sector. And so what you're doing now is quite important because once you, you make those submissions, those are the submissions we follow to facilitate an opening environment for businesses. Uh, the conversation of tax, of course, has been a conversation we have been pursuing and, and, and it has been part of our national uh, focus on national reforms. But, you know, I'll let you, I'll tell you what um, PRA has said on various occasions that, you know, when you when they receive submissions, they would like to understand this sector very well to be able to make a decision, and that's fair enough. And so the background work you're doing um, is good and should really then give a brief on the kind of constituents that you're talking about. When we make a proposal for tax regime, appropriate tax regime, I like your proposals on how it can be done, but you know, on your last point, as you discussed markets with regards to how you then give you know, the tax breaks, I think, think it's important to give a projection of what this, what are the numbers of businesses we are talking about that would qualify? What are the examples? Are you talking about a five-year tax break and you see a business growing to this level and then facilitate you know, taxation going forward? Um, what, what are the numbers you're talking about? What we've been asked several years is policy bridge should include projections on what we expect this to be in the coming years. And I think it's an easier conversation to have with KRA when we say, if you onboard um, 5 million SMEs right now, give them a tax break for three to five years. In five years, you will have 5 million plus paying a tax of, you know, a blanket tax of so much. So this is guaranteed revenue with regards to tax on your part. And at the same time, you're facilitating businesses to thrive and pass their five-year mark. Um, so that kind of narrative, I think, would be very clear for them. Uh, all your proposals are very valued and would back up this proposal. But yeah, on, on, on the tax on, on the appropriate tax regime, um, let's talk about let's talk about how we can how, 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 what the numbers and the projections would be like 
um, so that we don't focus too much on the now, but on the future and the sustainability of revenue collection as well as the sustainability of the business. Uh, but I, I concur with all the proposals you have shared. Uh, and maybe with regard to how you then qualify who are eligible as startups and and this i'm speaking to the proposal that you made that let's not look at just digital businesses but look at startups as a whole i think they are in make a link between the proposed you know tax, uh, startup bill and its implications on your proposals with regards to the tax policy so that at least we can begin like you know linking policy and making it more coherent with all these businesses um, I think that's all I have to share now, but well done. Keep the conversation, and I'm happy that you're submitting a policy brief, which would be a basis even for us following up on what, you know, what private sector says with regard to appropriate tax question. Thank you. Thank you very much, Florence. I've noted all. Hopefully, you can just include them in the final draft. Frederick, I can see you raised your hand. Uh, hi, everyone. Victor, thank you for that uh, powerful presentation. I think um, the input that you've already placed there uh, captures uh, uh, is a reflection of what the SMEs are looking at. Uh, just to comment on the taxation, when to effect taxation on the SMEs, say maybe after attaining certain milestones uh, past uh, maybe three to five years. The other uh, element would be around uh, how do we incentivize SMEs to uh, to come forward for tax de declaration because again we need to look at uh, how do the government benefit and how do the SMEs benefit so if uh, we would in a way incorporate uh, tax declaration incentives that one would support the businesses to grow but at the same time enable uh, demystify because I've interacted with a number of SMEs. There's an element of fear of paying tax or if they formalize certain components of their businesses, then the government will come for them. So it is necessary maybe to incentivize uh, such SMEs that one taxation is not punitive, but again, if you declare your taxation, then there's the benefits that some benefits that comes with it. So. I don't know how we can uh, uh, carve that into uh, the proposal, but uh, yes, it's something that maybe we can think through. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Frederick. Um, I don't see any hands raised. Um, uh, what like I like I think like I mentioned uh, we um, are going to incorporate I think the comments that we've received uh, just having also hard numbers I think as Florence has has uh, has mentioned uh, to see um, in terms of um, you know testing if you were to get uh, some some sort of tax break uh, what what incremental revenue are we going are we going to see uh, so that at least we can solidify um, you know the the argument for, for, for incentives. And I agree, if that is not there, then probably from a revenue perspective that uh, that uh, might, might not be able to fly. So I can see Eddie. Eddie, you, you raised your hand. Hi, uh, thanks, Victor. And uh, sorry, I've joined the call a bit late. So if the comments I'll make have been addressed, you'll forgive me. Okay. Uh, mine is just an observation and I've had a chance to look through the policy. And uh, well, the policy has a lot of good proposals, especially around the certainty of taxation and uh, changing the consideration for taxing, changing taxes uh, uh, from one year to five years. I think that's a welcome proposal. It gives companies and uh, organizations a time to adjust the new tax um, requirements. Uh, but however, I think it needs to be also be thought about so that it's harmonized with some of the other available tax provisions, more so around capital investments. And capital deductions currently are allowed to drag on for 10 years. So then if we say we are going to change laws within five years, many times some of these laws might impact already carried forward taxes. 
uh, and as such, it is it should be considered that if we speak of changing tax laws, then there should be a limitation as to how the changes suggested apply. Uh, we had a chance of uh, litigating against KRA on the minimum tax uh, concerns, and you'd find that how policy affects um, already given rights to taxpayers by taking them away after a period of, of time without necessarily looking at how it impacts the operation of the business and of course overall for SMEs, how that can infect, can affect uh, in the investment made by the SMEs. Uh, I've also seen that there's a proposal on uh, international instruments and treaties. Uh, well, I expected a bit much more on that because you know currently the biggest tax challenge in developing countries are challenges relating to taxation of the digital economy and the interplay of multinational enterprises and the investments in Kenya. Uh, first, I feel that if you don't address the question of the digital service tax at length, there are a lot of businesses right now in the SME space who are affected by this tax with the exception given under the regulations, but then this need for you to clearly identify how will you collect these taxes how are you going to protect uh, the budding economy in digital service? At the same time, when we speak of base erosion and profit shifting, which I've seen is one of the things that has been lifted, I was expecting to see a bit, ma a bit much more in terms of how are we are going to work around collaboration with other countries, especially in Africa. And you remember that Kenya is a member of the Africa Tax for, uh, Framework, but there has been no indication to what extent are we participating so that when we speak of tax in the digital economy there's a harmonized approach across africa to avoid instances where whereas we have a company set up in kenya many of these can many of these companies also have branches and subsidiaries in other countries and of course even attracting investments becomes hard because if each country has its own policy then it's very hard for you to attract uh, the kind of investment you're looking for i, I think by and large the document itself has very good proposals but then even in the implementation matrix so that we've expected to see like clear action plans and what level of engagement will there be in terms of implementing them uh, otherwise i feel the document is good but we might be unable to hold treasury accountable in terms of implementing it because a lot is left without specifics which in my view uh will be difficult for us to even understand whether we've been able to realize this or not uh, and also for the stakeholders of the county governments uh well, there are some of the expectations are too generic, like comply the tax policy, comply the tax laws. I mean, that's not new. It's something that is expected by the law. So they've expected a bit much more in terms of guiding how the counties, for example, should implement tax frameworks within the local government um, authority. And that would have helped us know if you want to set up a business at the local government level, what are the advantages of setting it up there rather than setting it up in the national level of tax, uh, the tax framework. Uh, I think those are my observations. And I, I say again, um, apologies if any of those have been addressed. I joined the call a bit late. Thank you. No worries, Eddie. Uh, that's, those, those are powerful, powerful remarks. Um, actually, uh, the issue around uh, what stuck for me was the issue around coll coll collaboration with Africa. And especially with the tangent of 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 of, of digital tax, um, I think that's that's something that I think that has stood out for me. Thank you very much. Um, is there any other comments or question? I can't. I think that's it's the only hand that I've seen. Um, it's eleven ten. Uh, also, not to unless. Of course, there is someone who has any additional comments. Um, from my end, I think it's just to incorporate um, the comments that we've been able to receive either by today or uh, a close of business tomorrow. Um, I think what we'll do is we'll do a, a joint submission across all the different ESOs. So uh, apologies for maybe if your logo doesn't appear currently, I think we were just, uh, due to time, I think we just, uh, uh, incorporated uh, the ESOs, uh, the associations that had uh, we had uh, top of mind. If you feel there is an association that is represented that is representing either startups or SMEs, of course we are we are open to just including you as part of the submission and part of the validation process that uh, we uh, had to go through. So we can I'll, I can share maybe my email. Uh, probably you can just be able to 
um, shoot an email in terms of um, your association that probably can be able to incorporate that. I think for me, that's uh, that's it. I would hand it over back to Marcy, the MC, to, to, uh, to wrap it up. Thank you very much. I didn't know policy discussions have an MC, but anyway, okay. <laughs> but no, but thank you so much, Victor. Um, and I think what we'll do is uh, Joanne will send out the feedback form. Um, and then also, I think also, Victor, you, will you be able to share your presentation? Because I think, yeah, we can definitely share the presentation and we'll also have a feedback form where you can take time to review um watch again the recording if you want to i know there were other people that also wanted to be on the call uh but they're not able to because of all, of course of time um but we can definitely keep it the window of feedback up to tomorrow close of business so just in case something else comes up please write to us uh the feedback will be shared by john because all of you have registered for the session and then you can actually submit it to us i think it's very it's a it's a it's a good initiative when we all take interest in what actually is being drafted because policy really is a long-term game, a uh, long-term, it's a, it's a journey that really just begins with one step. And so having these discussions and then documenting them and then continuously adding uh, to the existing policies and keep reviewing them, I think it's a really good initiative because at the end of the day, like what Moise, I think had mentioned earlier, he's here to represent his community of entrepreneurs. So all of us are representing whether it's your organization, whether it's your community of entrepreneurs, whether it's other ESOs as well, just, uh, just like ASEC. So we all have a role to play um, and we have to make sure that every voice is counted in this. So we want to say thank you so much for taking your time and uh, have a lovely day. You're all free to leave now. Thank you so much. Unless there's someone who has a burning question. Yeah. But well, thank you so much, everyone.